I'm Kirsten Wilson. And I'm Christian Haynes. Join us as we explore and embrace the challenges of digital learning. This is Living in Beta Mode. Welcome back to the second podcast episode, season one of Living in Beta Mode. This podcast content is developed by the Digital Learning Unit team and recorded in the DESE podcast studios of Donnie Lee. Podcast hosts are myself, Christian Haynes, and the DESE State Coordinator of Digital Learning, Kirsten Wilson. Today, I'm going to be chatting with Kirsten about what exactly is being flexible. Kirsten, what can our audience expect from this episode? Thanks, Christian. Last time we were together, we talked about living in beta mode. Today, we're going to be talking about being flexible, which is key when you are taking on the stance of living in beta mode. What does that mean to be flexible? From a personal standpoint, being flexible is instead of holding on to something tightly and without any give, it's holding my hands open. If I was to describe to the listeners what that looks like, it's standing with my palms up. Open means being ready to receive new ideas, information, and learning. To be open is to enter the arena. What do you mean by arena? Well, when I talk about arena, I'm referring to the quote by Teddy Roosevelt, made famous by Brene Brown in her book, Daring Greatly, which states, It's not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles, or where the doer of deeds could have done better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly who errs and comes up short again and again, because there is no effort without error or shortcoming, but who knows the great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows, in the end, the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who knew neither victory nor defeat. For me, that is the essence of being flexible. It means being in the arena, striving valiantly, willing to make errors, spend oneself in a worthy cause, and no matter the outcome, knows one dared greatly. It is about fully living and adjusting with courage to whatever comes your way. Flexibility from an educator's perspective also means the willingness to adjust midstream and being responsive to needs. In terms of curriculum, as long as the students are meeting the standard but want to do learning in a different way, that means flexibility. I challenged the educators listening today to let your students do things in different ways to show that they are mastering the learning. I know this can be hard, but being flexible also means letting go of control of how students learn. Why is flexibility in the world of digital learning so important? That's a good question. I'd like to share a little data with you, Christian. In 2020, during the pandemic shutdown of schools, in the United States, school districts accessed 1,327 different education technology or ed tech tools every month on average. This is according to the ed tech top 40 COVID-19 special release as shared by Learn Platform. What was discovered is that the tools didn't necessarily improve the learning. What we need to learn in our flexibility is as we learn more and utilize tools to determine effectiveness of these tools, we must be willing to navigate or move from one tool to another flexibly as we find better ways to enhance student learning and delivery of instruction. In addition to that, navigation between tools, it is also being flexible in our understanding of implementation of various digital learning strategies. As we stated in our first episode of Living in Beta Mode, digital learning is in its infancy comparatively to -to face-to-face learning. As we learn about how we integrate our knowledge and approach to learning first as educators and then as we support our students, things are in a constant state of change. As Anthony D'Angelo wisely said, become a student of change. It's the only thing that will remain constant. And what does flexibility look like in the world of digital learning? I touched on this a little bit earlier when I mentioned letting go of control of how students learn. With student-focused learning, flexibility can also mean path, place, pace, and time. This brings into our chat today the concept of blended learning. Let's talk more about the idea of blended learning as it applies to flexibility. 
Absolutely. But before I talk about that, I would like to share with our listeners the definition of blended learning that DESE has determined under the rules of governing uh, for distance and digital learning as adopted in May of 2020. In the rules, it states that blended learning is education in which instruction and content are delivered through supervised instruction in a classroom and online delivery of instruction with some element of student control over time, place, path, or pace. In this definition, the important component is the student control over time, place, path, or pace. The use of online learning or use of technology on its own doesn't necessarily make it blended learning. Also, one doesn't necessarily have to have a digital component for it to be blended learning. It's just a lot harder to implement and provide for place and pace. What is at blended learning's core, as I said before, is the flexibility and focus on student control. Where have you seen effective implementation of blended learning in action recently? I love that you asked this because it was so exciting when I saw this recently. This place that I have seen a good model for blended learning and flexibility with learners, especially with student control, is in Pulaski County Special School District at the Innovation Academy located at the Robinson High School campus. There, students had flexibility with seating, when and where they went to get additional support. Throughout the time while I was there, I observed this environment where students were advocating for what their needs were both as learners and as human beings. When interacting with the students, the level of agency they exhibited was phenomenal, and their motivation to learn, as well as their understanding of their purpose as learners at the Innovation Academy, demonstrated how blended learning and a flexible approach to learning truly meets the needs of learners. Additionally, I want to specifically mention this. The teachers were excited and eager to be there, and this was in the midst of the resurgence of COVID when I expected morale to be at its lowest. Why do you think morale wasn't low? While the situation at the Innovation Academy was completely student-focused, providing ample opportunity for student choice and voice, you could tell it was also focused on teacher voice. Actually, it was a collective learner voice with everyone working together to reach both individual and collective goals. The energy and enthusiasm was evident by both teachers and students. It was so amazing, I wanted to be a learner in that environment. So you're saying that if it's not a blended learning environment with digital learning, then it's not beneficial to student learning? Not at all. Let me clarify. Just because the digital learning environment isn't blended doesn't mean it's not beneficial to students. You can be both blended and digital, but it doesn't have to be either or. So if you're not blended yet, technology can still involve integration. Being blended isn't the most important thing. What is important is that we provide opportunities for students to become skilled in digital literacy, media literacy, and citizenship. Citizenship being both the digital and the face-to-face communities that they live in, where we model and help our students become positive influencers in both worlds simultaneously is critical. In a classroom or online environment, it is the perfect place to safely allow students to learn best practices as citizens, both in the digital and face-to-face communities they live and work in. The world around us is changing at a fast rate. In August 2010, then Google CEO Eric Schmidt shared in an interview that every two days we create as much information as we did from the dawn of civilization up until 2003. Being able to filter through that information both as lead learners and student learners requires adaptability and flexibility as well as an awareness. Being able to process and interact with media and digital tools provides that opportunity and benefits student learners, impacting them in ways that will carry them beyond their K-12 learning experiences. What other things should be considered when considering the idea of being flexible? Being flexible is understanding that things don't always go perfectly and responding to just-in-time support by name and need. Leveraging digital tools helps us to be able to respond with flexibility. When we are able to respond to students with flexibility, you are able to connect with them on a personal level and support them both socially, emotionally, and academically. One of the misnomers of digital learning is that there's a disconnect between students and their teachers. 
I believe and have witnessed that if we leverage tools in the right way, we can enhance our relationships with our students and more quickly attend to their needs with the use of digital tools. Digital tools, when used purposefully, can greatly enhance relationships and learning. This isn't just with blended learning. Technology integration that is impactful is the best thing you can do for your students both personally and in the future to help them develop as digitally literate learners. Why should we maintain a stance of being flexible in regard to digital learning? Digital learning hasn't been clearly defined. It can really be easy to get fixated on a definition. In general, there are all kinds of ways that we have defined different methods or approaches in education. However, we know that things are in a constant state of change. New technologies and approaches to digital learning require us to have a flexible or growth mindset. If we have a fixed idea on what digital learning is, then as digital learning grows and evolves, we could find ourselves in a place of irrelevance. Just like the name of this podcast, Living in Beta Mode, we need to be ready to adjust and change the way the digital landscape is changing and model that flexibility to our students. And with that, what do you want to leave us with? Whatever you do, wherever you go, remember to embrace life and know that all of us are living in beta mode. Well, thank you, Kirsten. I hope everyone enjoyed this chat as much as we did. Again, in our upcoming episodes, we are going to go deeper with the concept of living in beta mode in regard to the overall tie to digital learning. Our next episode is going to dive into the elephant theory on March 9th. Following that, the next episodes that will follow every two weeks on Tuesdays are Teaching from Mistakes, Assessing in the Moment, Mindset of Innovation, Origin of Ideas, Determination, Resilience, and Grit, and Engaging Learners. What are some other things that are going on with the DLU? I'm so glad you asked. On the third Thursday of every month, we have what are called Deal Days. Deal stands for Drop Everything and Learn. From 11.30 to noon, we will have a session where we focus on a tool or a way to support an aspect of digital learning. Our past episodes include tips and tricks with social media and with Pear Deck. Our next Deal Days on March 17th, we're focusing on tips and tricks with Nearpod. You can go to our website on the DESI website in Research and Technology Division section and find information regarding this under Professional Development. There is a registration link there so that you can get access to the Zoom link. You can also find our previous Deal Day recordings on that page and on our YouTube channel. Thanks for listening. I'm Kirsten Wilson. And I'm Christian Haynes. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast on Spreaker, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast catcher. You can also find us by going to the Desi website and searching Desi Podcasts. Other Desi Podcasts we recommend are Smack Talk, Guide for Life, Aware, and 21st CCLC. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our new YouTube channel, AR Digital Learning Unit. You can also follow us on Twitter or Facebook at Digital Ed AR. Are you interested in our support? Reach out to us via email through contact us at ardlu.org. Thank you for listening to the Desi Digital Learning Unit's second episode of season one, Living in Beta Mode. You can catch our next episode, The Elephant Theory, set to be released in two weeks on Tuesday, March 9th. Thanks again.